Alexa, turn the deck and curtains off. Hello, welcome to DIY Machines. In this video, I'll step you through how to build your very own Alexa controlled curtain automation system. It's easy to build, doesn't cost very much money, and if you don't want to solder, you don't need to do any. Let's start. You're going to need a few items first before you can build your own. As usual, you'll find a link in the description below to all of these parts. The first thing you'll need is some PLA plastic. You only need about 100 grams and we'll use this to print the main body and the spindle of our Alexa system. A long USB-A to micro-B cable, some steel fishing wire. Normal fishing wire is too elastic, it stretches too much. Uh, this is much more suitable. A 100 microfarads capacitor, some electrical wire. I'm using some jumpers, an ESP8266. I'm using this one, it's a Feather Hazar. Two mini self adhesive breadboards, an 8 cell AA battery holder, and of course, 8 AA batteries as well. Two M4 nuts, two M4 by 10 bolts, and four M3 by 10 bolts, a NEMA 17 stepper motor, and an A4988 stepper driver. Uh, these are very inexpensive, and finally, some cable tidies to attach it to our pole. We'll start by printing the main housing. I've printed mine with a brim to help increase the surface area in contact with the print bed to prevent it from slipping whilst printing. I've also enabled supports on the build surface only. Once the print is complete, remove the unwanted support material and brim from the printed part. We then fit the stepper motor into place first. Just before we do this though, insert one of the M4 nuts into this opening. Ensure when you fit it that the wires coming from the stepper motor are heading towards the inside of the housing. Now we can start assembling our electronics. We'll start by connecting our Feather Hazard to our A498 stepper driver board. The first connection we're going to make We'll go from pin 16 on our ESP8266 to the enable pin on our stepper driver. Pin 16 is one, two, three, four pins down. And then our enable pin here is this top one. The next connection goes from pin zero on the feather to the direction pin on the motor driver. and the direction one is at the other end of our motor driver. The direction pin tells the stepper driver which way you want it to turn the stepper motor, clockwise or anti-clockwise. You do this by setting the pins either high or low. Then pin 13 goes to our step pin. That's our seventh pin down and the second one up on this side. The step pin tells the stepper motor board when to take a step. Um, you do this by changing the voltage from low to high on that pin. So if you want to take 10 steps, you go from low to high, low to high, 10 times. Now we'll connect the ground to ground. We're going to use the ground on this side. That's the fourth one up. And ground is over here in the corner. Three volts to VDD. That's second one up there. And the second one up here. Now we'll connect the stepper motor that we've already put into our stepper motor housing. Yours may have a different cable on the end, but the colours should be similar. As long as you follow the same colours to the same pins, it should be absolutely fine. My stepper motor has this style of connection on it, which can be easily added straight to my breadboard. Now we've got four colour wires here. Blue, red, green and black. Now the blue wire won't sit next to VDD on our stepper board. This is the one we've just connected to the three volts on our feather. As I was saying just now, 
Don't worry if your connection isn't the same on your stepper motor, just make sure these same wires match up in the same slot. So from the bottom upwards, blue, red, green, and black. Now we'll add our 100 microfarads capacitor. This helps to even out any spikes in our power supply. Now you have two legs on this, there's a longer leg and a shorter leg. The longer leg is the positive terminal. And you'll find markings on the side that can also confirm the negative terminal. I've already trimmed mine, so my legs are the same size. So this takes the two connections above the stepper motor. Now we'll connect the reset and sleep pins on the motor driver together. This is done by adding a Y here to sleep and reset, which are the third and fourth pin respectively. Now we'll connect our power supply. In our case, it's eight AA batteries. So the negative is the second pin down here and the positive is the top one. Now, as I mentioned before, you don't need to solder all of this together if you don't want to. Once you've positioned all of this in our housing, it shouldn't be disturbed and should be absolutely fine. But if you'd like to solder yours, that's absolutely fine. I'd suggest soldering it to the headers of the pins if you already have pins positioned, or if not, you can solder it directly to your boards. I'd like to take a quick moment to say thank you to my newest Patreon supporter, Terence Lachlan. I hope I got your name right. If you'd like to support this channel, either because you're making one of these or you want to help support us financially, please consider giving us something on Patreon or buy us a coffee on Coffee. You'll find a link to both of these in the descriptions below. Now we'll upload our code. Plug one end of the USB cable into your ESP8266 and then plug the other end into your PC. The code that I've written is based on this I've found on GitHub. Once you've downloaded the code, open it in the Arduino IDE. There's a few things you'll need to change. If you scroll to the top of the page, on line 17, you need to enter your Wi-Fi SSID. This is the name of your Wi-Fi network. Then on the following line 18, you need to enter the password for your Wi-Fi network. Then, if you scroll down to line 60, here you can set the name that Alexa will respond to when you want to open and close your curtains. Now mine are on the decking, so I've called them decking curtains. So I will be asking Alexa to either turn the decking curtains on or turn the decking curtains off. The Wemo software that this is based on emulates a Wemo plug. So we need to trigger it by saying on and off. Once you've finished this, you can open your serial monitor and then ensure that the board rate is set to 9600. At this point you can then upload your code. Whilst this is uploading, you should see this little blue light on your Feather Hazard flashing. At this stage you still want the battery power switched off. If all goes well, you should see in your serial monitor text similar to mine, confirming that it has connected to your Wi-Fi and has received an IP address. At this point, we can go into our smartphones. If you haven't already installed it, install the Amazon Alexa app. Launch this and click on the Smart Home Devices button in the bottom right here. At this point, we need to tell Alexa we need to connect a new device. So press the plus up here and press Add Device. Now, even though we are emulating a Wemo plug, we don't want to try and connect it using the Wemo app. So scroll down the various device types and select other. Then press discover devices. Now, if you watch your serial monitor, you should see it spew out a load of text. Uh, this is it responding to Alexa's querying for any new devices on the network. So this looks promising. And here we go. Alexa has found one new plug. So press done. You can either trigger it by talking to Alexa and saying, Alexa, turn the decking curtains on, or Alexa, turn the decking curtains off. You can also do it in the app. If you head to plugs, you'll find your new device and you toggle on and off here. 
Now that we know the code so far works properly, you can turn on your battery power supply. Ask Alexa to turn your curtains on and you should see her move the stepper motor in one direction. When you ask her to turn them off, she should turn the stepper motor in the opposite direction. If all this goes as intended, we'll fit the electronics inside the housing and then we'll take it to our curtain and fit it to our curtain pole. For the final part of assembling the housing, you'll need to print the base plate. You'll also need two M4 by 10 bolts, one M4 nut. The first thing we need to do is to position the two mini breadboards inside our motor housing. Peel off the self-adhesive backing and then attach them like this. We'll take the breadboard with our ESP8266 on it. And this is positioned up against the side of the stepper motor. Slide it in all the way up, push it against the left side. Now before we position the one for the motor driver, we need to put into place our nut. This needs to be positioned behind this hole here. If you place it in the hole, and then your other breadboard is positioned up inside this hole. As you position your breadboard in here. But this one gets stuck against this side. After you've carefully positioned your breadboard in, you'll find it holds your nut in place securely. Carefully incorporate the rest of the electronics, ensuring that the access to the USB port is still clear. There are several holes in the base plate for the motor housing. The large hole is designed for the base of the stepper motor to pass through and the power leads going to our battery power supply. And the smaller hole is there to allow us to connect the USB cable. The other two are for our bolts. Now that we've finished sealing our electronics inside the motor housing, we can attach the battery power supply. The battery power supply is designed to fit on these two little lugs here. We'll attach it with some hot melt glue. So we'll apply some hot melt glue here and then position our battery power supply like this. And our USB cable for the access port underneath. It's a good idea to test the curtain opener again like we were just doing. This is to ensure that all the electronics are sat in place properly and nothing has come loose. If it has, just pop back and check your connections again. The self-adhesive breadboards can be removed and replaced. I've done it with mine several times and it's not an issue. Once you're happy that everything is working fine, we'll attach it to our curtain pole. To attach our first half of the curtains, you'll need to leave a couple of meters of loose wire hanging over the side of this pole. We'll then travel along here, over this center pole, around the pole here, Pull these curtains all the way across to where you want them closed and then we'll tie it to this ring. So, let's reel off some of the wire and pass it over the first one. Keep leaving plenty of wire, pass it over this post, keep going, round and underneath this one. And come all the way back to here. Leave some free and then you can cut this wire. Now that we've got our piece of wire here, we'll tie it to this ring. So pull your curtain over and then tie it. You might know some much fancier knots than mine, but I'm just doing several of them so it doesn't slip. It's a good idea to check that what we've connected up so far works properly. This is easy to do. You just need to pull the string on this side and your curtain should open on that side. And then if you pull the curtains on this side, you should find that the string moves again back to the left. If that happens, you're fine so far. Let's connect the next curtain. To connect this side of the curtain, you need to attach it to the wire we were using earlier. So if you have both of them closed, pull your wire through from the loose end 
You need to make sure that they're both close together and then carefully bring this one over the top of this pole, not underneath, and tie it to the ring on this side. Once you've finished that, take the loose piece of string and pass it back over the end pole. Now is another good time to check your curtain is working as intended. To check it, take your loose wire and pull it. Both sides of the curtain should now open together. And then to close it, grab this end of the curtain and pull it. Both sides should come together and meet nicely in the middle. The last one will be tied around the ring of this curtain, passed over the top, along here, over the edge, and then we'll leave a couple of meters spare again. The easiest way to do this last one is to take the loose end of your reel, put one end on the floor, don't let it run away from you too far, and tie it to this pot. Once you've done that, you can pass it over the pole, along here, and then over there. We lost some spare. Cut it. You can now do one final test on your curtain wire. If you pull on one of your loose pieces of string, both sides should open. And then, if you pull on the other one, both should close. Now for this step, you'll need the three parts of the spindle printed, the motor housing we assembled earlier, and some hot melt glue. You'll also need the two ends of the loose wire that we were using earlier. Take one piece and then thread it through the lowest hole. You should then be able to pull it through from the other side. And take the end of the string that we've just threaded through the housing and your spin and the first piece of the spindle and thread it through this little hole down here. Wrap it round and tie it in a knot. This is to stop it pulling itself back through later on. And then use your hot milk glue to fix it in place. There we go. It looks a little messy, but as long as the string doesn't come loose, we're good to carry on. And the next thing we'll do is add some hot melt glue to this little lip all the way around and place our second piece over. Now, whilst that glue cools, we can take the other end of the wire we were working with earlier and thread it through the second hole on our motor housing. Now this one doesn't have a through hole, so if you pull some slack through, there's a little groove here you can slide it into, like that. And as before, you can wrap the string around and tie it in a few knots until it's nice and secure. And you can add some more hot melt glue to keep everything in place. And last but not least, Add some glue to the top here. Take the last piece and seat it on top. Hold it tight for a while whilst we wait for it to dry. Now the next thing we need to do is to wind our wires onto the spindle. You want to wind one of the wires in a clockwise direction. Doesn't matter which one and the other wire wants to be wound in an anti-clockwise direction. Keep doing this as you take up the slack. And then just rest it in here for now. Don't push it onto the spoke just yet. To make this a bit easier to see, I'm going to lift my curtains up. Now the first thing you want to do is to thread a cable tidy through this hole here. And then the second one 
through the other hole. This can then be positioned on your curtain pole and threaded through your ties. Now don't pull them really tight, just enough to hold it into place for now. Now tie a single cable tidy around your pole. Again, only pull it slightly tight and then through this one, thread another, but also thread it through this one here. Again, just a few clicks. We don't want it to be tight yet. Now, before we tighten the wires, you want to slide your motor housing as far to the center of your curtain pole as you can. Take off the spindle of wire and continue to reel it in. Now you want to keep winding this until both lines are quite taut. Now, in the bottom of your spindle, you'll find there is a flat edge, which ties up with the flat edge on the shaft of the stepper motor. Line these two up and then drop it over the shaft. There you go. We can now tighten the two onto the pole a bit tighter. Then slide your motor housing away from the center of the curtain and use the two tidies we added earlier on this pole to hold it into place. Now you can plug in the USB cable to the bottom of your housing. And then plug the other end into your computer. And then turn on the power supply. Now you can open the Alexa app on your phone, go to plugs, find your curtains and toggle them. Once you've done that, you can then toggle them closed again. Now, if you encounter any issues with your curtain as it tries to move side to side, there are a few things you can check. One of them is check how taunt your string is. If it's too taunt, you can loosen it by adjusting the cable tidies down at the other end where your motor housing is. The other is your cables may be too loose. In this case, slide your motor housing further away from the center of the curtain poles. You may have to play with this distance for some time to find the optimum tension on your setup. As your curtain gets closer to the center pole, you may find that if you've tied it low down in your ring, as it's trying to follow the path of the wire over this pole, your motor is struggling as it's also trying to lift the curtain upwards. In this case, slide your knot further up the curtain so as to create as straight a line as possible for the path of the wire. Now you may find as your curtain travels backwards and forwards, it takes these little momentary pauses. This is part of our code. Um, we sometimes need to yield to the Wi-Fi on the ESP8266 so as we can keep the Wi-Fi connection live. If we don't have these little pauses and allow other parts of the code to execute, we'll lose our Wi-Fi connection and then we'll lose control of our curtain. Now, if you can code better than me, you might be able to figure a way around this, in which case, please do and share with us the code. We'd be really grateful. Now that we have it connected to our curtain pole, we'll need to configure how far the Feather Hazard moves the curtain when trying to fully open or fully close our curtains. This is done on a single line in the code. I'll show you where this needs to be changed. Scroll down to line 91 in your code and alter this number. This number is telling your code how long to keep moving the motor when we ask it to turn the curtains on or off. You need to decrease this number if your motors keep turning when your curtains have made it far enough, or increase it if it stops prematurely. I hope you've enjoyed building your own Alexa curtain control system. If you have, please check out my other projects. We have a remote controlled BBA, word clock, automatic drone race lap timer, and a hot wire cutter. 
and a bar robot that's a little bit too big to fit in this shot. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell and share the project with anyone else who you think might be interested. Otherwise, until next time, ciao for now.